Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hi, my name is Faisal Khan, Cisco Voice Instructor at Voice Bootcamp. In this particular chapter, I'm going to focus on Peripheral Gateway and CTI OS. Peripheral Gateway is a switch or a device that allows you to communicate with an ICM, such as ACD or Call Manager, PVX, VRU, or Unified CM. A call arrives at the peripheral to a trunk that are organized into a trunk group. A logical interface controller and a physical interface controller represent the peripheral gateway. When an ICM wants to talk to a call manager, it will use the peripheral gateway to communicate with that device. Now each, peripheral gateway, uh, each peripheral will communicate with the system software using a peripheral gateway known as PG. A PG can be a simplex computer or a duplex, again side A and side B. A single PG can service more than one peripheral, but each peripheral can only use one PG. ICM software use lo logical controller, physical controller, and a router uh, peripheral ID to communicate with the respective PG devices. Such IDs are generated automatically, and once deleted, will re uh, it will not be available or will be able to available for reuse. Here's an example of a PG1 with the logical controller 5000 physical controller 5000 now the first peripheral ID is also going to be 5000 but the subsequent peripheral ID that you create will increment based on what was last created now it doesn't necessarily mean it will be 5001 5002 but depends on which order they are created to configure PG you need to, in order to configure PG first of all we need to define PG parameters in central controller such as what is going to be my logical ID, what is, what is going to be my physical ID. Uh, again, those setting uh, IDs are generated automatically upon saving of the PG settings. Single PG ser server can communicate with multiple peripheral using Peripheral Interface Manager. Now, if a single PG is to point to multiple peripheral, such as a single PG, PG one connect, uh, connecting to Call Manager and CVP, then the PG type must be set as a generic PG and a PIM must be defined for each peripheral with the correct PG type such as CUCM soft ACD for call manager, BRU for IVR or CVP. A logical and a physical perif and a peripheral ID will be generated based on first come first serve basis. So in my central controller using the configuration manager I'm going to use a PG con explorer and then I'm going to enable ret click on retrieve to see if there's an existing PG configured if not then I can click on add PG step number two sorry add peripheral step number two now the first peripheral I've added here is called CUCM1 now if you take a look at the step number three the logical controller ID 5000 physical controller ID is 5000 peripheral ID is also 5000 for the first one now under CUCM1 if I were to create a second PIM or peripheral interface manager then my peripheral ID will be 5001 but the logical controller and the physical controller is going to be 5000. So this is the relationship uh, that we need to note it down when we are configuring the PG gateway. Now when you are configuring the PG you can enable the routing client so if the call manager is going to act as a routing client we must enable post uh, routing and select routing client. The name of the routing client is very important so is the ID which will be generated automatically. Now if you want the CVP to act as a routing client, they must do the same thing for CVP as well. To add a CVP, uh, the, v, uh, the client type of the PG that you create is going to be VRU. If I go back to the previous scenario, you notice the client type is called CUCM Soft ACD. Now if this PG, CUCM1, happens to, is pointing to a call manager and a CVP at the same time then the client type right here is going to be generic PG but the client type that you define on a PIM is going to be call manager for the call manager and VRU for the CVP or IPI VR now in our case the next slide where we define a VRU make sure that the client type is set is VRU and the peripheral client type is also set to VRU as well. 
Now to allow IPIVR or CVP to request route from the ICM, we must enable routing client. Uh, otherwise, a CVP or IPIVR will not be able to send a request to ICM for a route. Now, like I said, define the VRU. Uh, CVP use a particular VRU type. We'll talk about network VRU in the next chapter. The VRU must be defined under the advanced tab of that particular peripheral interface manager. Once that part is set up, then you go to the PG server, which can be the same server as your route or central controller or a separate server. If it is a separate server, you log into the server and make sure that the contact center enterprise based software is installed. Then open up the UCCE tools and click on peripherals gateway setup. So that this particular server becomes the middleman between ICM and peripheral such as call manager or CVP. So here we're going to first define an instance then on the right hand side create those components such as CTIOS, CG, uh, PG1A and PG2A. By clicking on peripheral gateway and then define what kind of peripheral I'm going to enable. So here for example I'm adding a call manager PG. Then click on add to add the peripheral interface manager. Now peripheral interface manager will reflect what is configured in the PG Explorer. So in this case for example uh, this is the PIM name the peripheral ID that must match what is configured in the PG Explorer. Then followed by the IP address of call manager JTAP user and the password. Now we must create a ap application user called JTAP underscore ICM in this example in our call manager associate that user account to the uh, the CTI route point which is going to be the trigger uh, also, and then also enable all CTI enable groups for that particular user. Now before you can go further you need to log into the call manager from the PG server and then download the JTAP client and install it on the PG server from that particular call manager. So here's an example of uh, continued configuration of the P, uh, peripheral interface manager. Uh, this this gives you an option to decide which side you want to uh, connect to first. If you have a preference, or side A or side B, or you can say no preference. So typically, if the PG is running on the same side as side A or in the same server, you can say side A preferred. But if the PG is running an independent on his on his own server, you can say no side preference. Let the router make the decision which which is whichever is the active site. Now if side A property is local that means they are in the same physical box or same local area network select uh, local but if the site A or site B is located on another location which is across the WAN then select the WAN because if you select WAN the, uh, the usable bandwidth that is required it will, def will be defined right here. The next step is to define your private and public interfaces again this network name that you have host name must be configured properly and they should be pingable. If you if these names are not pingable then your router will continue to crash and a uh, typical shutdown uh, window comes up uh, when, you, when you try to run these services. So it's very important that your private interface and visible interfaces are labeled properly. Usually what is recommended is that you create a spreadsheet with all these names and IP address and make sure you have those names and IP addresses configured in your DNS. Uh, it is recommended to use DNS because you don't want to keep updating the host file if there's any changes in your network. If the service, uh, if everything is configured properly, uh, various processes will be uh, activated on the PG server. Again, if you're not able to see this process, that means that you are RDP into a session rather than the console. Now, if your call manager authentication has been successful from your PG server, then you will see a process called JTAP GW active and COCIM underscore PIM active. It is very important that these two services are active. It does not mean that your CTI route point in call manager will be registered. All it means that the PG was able to communicate with the call manager and authenticate. 
if you change the password in the call manager you will see that after a few seconds that these two services become idle or inactive the next step is to define a PG for CVP or IPIVR similar settings but instead of selecting COCM you're going to select VRU you're going to enable PG controller ID and PG uh, peripheral IDs uh, define the host name of the CVP server and the VRU connection port is going to be 5000. It is very important that the logical ID and the peripheral ID is match based on your PG Explorer. If the VRU process is act, uh, configured properly, meaning that if the CVP or IPIVR is, IPIVR is configured properly, the VRU uh, PIM will be active mode. Uh, various inf you may see various information on your screen or you may not see anything because by default some of this process uh, display uh, has been disabled uh, in the registry so if you want to be able to see all these messages you need to enable them in the registry settings CTI OS is required for um, on the PG CTI OS is required for the desktop agent uh, which interface between the agent desktop and the ICM ICM will use a CTIOS connectivity to communicate with the agent and various other devices. CTIOS used to pass data to the CAD system, for example. So we're going to install a CTIOS CG node uh, by adding a new peripheral called CTIOS. Define the ICM system ID. So ICM system ID is basically the DMP, um, DMP ID or the process ID in, in this case. Now the client connection port number 42027 is, is very important because this is the port that will be used by CTIOS server to communicate with the CTIOS. Define, uh, when you are deploying the CTIOS server, define your public and private interfaces of your PG and the CG, uh, CG server, which is CTIOS server. If everything is uh, fine, you will see a process activated call CTI SVR and it should be active if everything is configured properly. Once that is done you're going to install CTI OS server uh, which is a separate application allows the agent desktop uh, client to log in to the ICM environment. So here you define a CTI OS instance. Uh, if you click on add and you're not, you're not able to click on the drop down menu uh, just simply type the instant name manually. Uh, next step is to add a CTI OS server. So first one is going to be CTI OS 1. Here you define site A and site B address. Uh, the default port for CTI OS server is 42028. In the peripheral identifier you define a logical name and a peripheral ID uh, which will be uh, it must be unique and the peripheral type. In this case the peripheral type is UCCE. Now log in by, you can log in, an agent can log into the contact center using their desktop tool either by their ID or by their, by their login name. The default behavior is use agent ID which could be any extension, which could be any four digit number or randomly generated number. Uh, these ID are generated when you're creating the agent account in the ICM. The next step is to define your CTI OS server, which is uh, basically your um, uh, the instance that was created earlier. Here you define the listening port 42028 and the heartbeat interval. Once the CTI OS CTI OS server has been um, activated or configured, the pro uh, process will start. This process, what it's trying to do, the CTI OS server is trying to con contact the CG which is CTI OS instance uh, on port 42027 that was created before CTI OS server was being installed. Uh, this must be active as well as you can see. Now once this is done what you're going to have is an agent will open up their ca um, uh, agent desktop uh, utility Cisco agent desktop will then point to the CTI OS server CTIOS server uses a CG or CTIOS to communicate with ICM. So in conclusion, the PG gateway is used by ICM to communicate with CUCM, IPIVR or CVP. 
each peripheral is a single PG must be uh, a single PG must be configured. A PG can have multiple peripheral if PG type is set to generic. A PIM or peripheral interface manager must be configured for each peripheral devices. Logical ID, physical ID, and peripheral ID must be defined when configured PIM in the PG server. Such IDs are automatically generated upon saving of this configuration in the PG Explorer. CTIOS on PG must be configured for CTIOS server to communicate with the agent desktop.